If you need to add some basic shapes like a line, circle, or a square, then come up here on the Home tab and go to the Drawing Group, and you've got your shapes. Or, if you're in this neck of the woods on the Insert tab, go to the Illustrations Group and click on Shapes. Either way. Since we're here, let's go ahead and let's see, we've got a bunch of categories, lines, rectangles, basic shapes. Let's do a very basic one. Let's do a line. You think it's basic? Watch this. Go ahead and click on it, and now it's in drawing mode. Because we don't have a pointer, we now have a black cross, meaning that when you click and drag and let go, hey, there's your line. And then if you want to get rid of it, well, with it selected, how do you know it's selected? Because it has the resizing handles on either end, the circles. Then you can hit the delete key and get rid of it. If you click off of it, a couple of things happen. One, it no longer has the handles to let you know that you have it selected. And also, I don't know if you saw it, but up here it had its related contextual format tab, meaning that the commands on there are for what you have selected here, this shape. So select it, and hey, it brings it back up. So with it selected, if I hit the delete key, it's gone. Let's go ahead and redraw it. Home tab, drawing group, shapes. Select the line, click and then click and drag. Now, before I let go of the mouse, this time, when I'm moving it around, if I hold down the shift key, it does it in increments of 45 degrees. Isn't that cool? So if you really want it flat, hold down the shift key to help you out, or at a 45 degree angle. I'm going to let go of the shift key and do it as thus. And then if I don't like the color of it, the thickness of it, to make some changes there, let's see what it's got. I would say go to the Format tab. You can also do this on the Home tab because in the Drawing group, you do have the color of the line. It's called Outline, but if we had a circle or a square, it would be the outline of the circle and square. But since it's a line, well, it's the actual line. So you've got the color for the lines, right? Or the line. Then you have the Shape Effects. You see that? And then let's click off. Then you have the Quick Styles, which is a collection of formats. You can hover over it to give you a preview of it. That one's intense. Ooh, Intense Line Accent 2. So that's the name of that. In any case, you can do it there if you're on the Home tab, or come up here, click on the Format tab, and go to the Shape Styles, and it's the same thing, right? Click on the More button, and you get your Intense Accent 2. I'm not going to do that. Let me click off. And you got your Shape Outline. Click on it, and you can do something. Let's do Red. And then click on it again, because we get more options. You can go to No Color at All no outline and it totally disappears. You can use the eyedropper to select a color from anywhere on your slide and have it update to what you have here. So like, you know, the blue-gray will update that line to the blue-gray. You can change the thickness of it, you know, make it something thicker. But if you want something even more than what you see there, then click on the shape outline again. Go down to weight and then go down to more. Now when you see more, that means it's going to open up the task pane and give you more. And so over here, in addition to what was available up here on the drop down, it's also over here, but we also get transparency, which we didn't have before, so we can click and drag that, and ooh, that's kind of spooky, how it just fades in the background there slightly. And then change the, well, when I click in the box here, you can see you can go up to, oops, did it again, 1,584 points, that's a lot of points, so you can use the spin dial options to make it thicker. And let's see, what else do you get? You have the dash type, and also let's see the compound. Ooh, if you want to make a double here, double line, and it goes to double, I'm going to undo that. And let's do the dash type and make it something, ooh, rounded dot. Let's see how that looks. Uh, it's okay. It's up to you. And again, you can click on the drop down here, and you can change the dashes there. So the cap type, when I click off of it, you see how it's square? Of course, now since I don't have it selected, I don't get the related contextual format tab, and it updates the task pane to the background, which is my black to, let's see, blue-gray. You can see it over here, the gradient goes from black, kind of gets a little bit not as black here than to the blue-gray. So if I go ahead and select my line, then it updates it over here so I can make my changes to the selection. And so we've got the cap type as flat. If I want to make it round, and then click off, now it's round, well, Everything's round, so it's not cap the line itself, and also the outer ends. Let's go ahead and select it. And then if you want to give it an arrow, you can do it at the beginning. Now, what is the beginning? Is it this end or that end? Well, click on it, and then select it, and it's that end. And if you're like, no, I don't want it that end, then change it back to no arrow, and then go down to the end arrow, and flip it so it's at the other end. 
You could do it that way or again come up here click on shape outline and there's your arrow options to one end or the other or both ends for that matter or you can go ahead and select more arrows but when you do that again when you're doing something more it comes and opens up since it's already open the format shape task pane okay let's go ahead and close out of here and try to keep it simple next we've got our shape effects you can give it shadow it's not going to help me here because of the dark background but if you wanted to find some shadow and if you want more options then again it's going to open up the task pane to give you more options here let's go ahead and close out of that shape effects reflection if you want one glow let's do something purplish Ooh, that's kind of eerily cool and let's see what other effects do you have soft edges bevel hover over those and just go through those and know that if you don't like what you see here check down at the bottom to see if you can open up that task pane and get more options for 3d and the material if you want it like special effects soft edges flat in any case i'll click off and close out of that so that's the line now what about like let's say a square or a circle and the reason why i bring up those two specifically is because you won't find them in your shapes well, speaking of shapes and drawing additional shapes, well, since we have one shape selected and it's got the related contextual format tab up, you can just come over here and you get those shapes. Of course, if you click off of the shape, it disappears, and then you've got to go to the Home tab to the Drawing group to add more shapes, or the Insert tab to the Illustrations group for more shapes. So, you know, while we're here and it's selected, come up here and click on More. Now, do you see a circle or a square? I don't. So what you have to do if you want to draw, like, let's say a square, you have to select the rectangle. I know, kind of crazy, isn't it? Go ahead and select rectangle, and you get the black cross, then go ahead and click and drag. And I got a vertical rectangle, and I could try to bring it out and go, okay, that's kind of looking like a square, because I need a square, not a vertical rectangle. Well, if you want help in this, hold down the shift key, and it pops it open to the perfect square. Oh, isn't that nice? Let go of the mouse, let go of the shift key. And it's the same thing for a circle. To draw a circle, you have to start by selecting the oval. So let's go ahead and select that shape so we can bring up the Format tab and come back over here to Insert Shapes. And do you see a circle? No, just an oval. Click on it. And to get your circle, click and drag. And you can try to eyeball it and go diagonally down and go, ooh, I'm pretty good, freehand with my circles. To exaggerate, to make a point, if you're more vertical or horizontal and you're like, I can't draw the circle, hold down the Shift key. Not that you would think you could draw a circle from an oval, but that's how you do it in Microsoft. Select the oval, hold down the shift key when you're drawing your oval to make a perfect circle, and same goes for making the perfect square. Let go of the mouse and let go of the shift key, and let's resize that. Hover in the bottom right-hand corner of the circle and click and drag to push it in, but when I push it in, if I go too far to the left, I get a more vertical oval, and too far up and to the right, so when you're resizing it, hold down the shift key and then push it in, and then let go of the mouse and let go of the shift key. So that shift key is very handy dandy. Let's go ahead and click and drag it around. And then, of course, with your shapes, your circle, your square, just like the line, up here on the Format tab in the Shape Styles group, click on the More button, and you get your pre-formatted themes, like Subtle Effect Gold Accent 3. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Looks like a spooky moon. Select that. I can go with that. But if you like, let's say, the outline of it, not the fill, or you like the fill but not the outline, well, you can come up here, there's your fill and outline, and also effects, if you want to maybe add a reflection. So first of all, the fill, you can just hover over it, and it's the same thing with the line, so it's nothing new, it's just that we're applying it to a circle. And you can also have it as a picture, if you got a picture, go ahead and click on it, and you can search the web for a picture, or browse from your computer. Browse and find a sample picture, chrysanthemum. Okay, that's not working for me. Let's go ahead and hit undo. I like the way it was. But in any case, that's for your fill there. And you can do gradients and textures. And then if you want more gradients, now the gradient is transitioning from one color to the next. And in this case, it's going, well, in this example, linear right. It goes from light white to orange back to light white. But I like the way it is, more horizontal here, the default. Well, it says no gradient. If I go ahead and choose that, then it's just like totally no transition. So let's go ahead and click off, or you can say more gradients, and it opens up, and then you get your gradient stops here, how it transitions from one color to the next, and you've got your option to add additional stops and set as color, or remove by selecting a stop and getting rid of that stop.
so you have less transitions from one color to the next or less colors that you can add at each stop that it transitions from one to the next. Now I want to keep it simple and basic in this training video so I don't want to get hung up on gradients. Let me go ahead and hit undo but it's enough to get you thinking and we'll cover more advanced options in the next training video of advanced shapes. So let's close out of here and we've got our shape outline so we can go ahead and make it red and you probably can't see that outline too well. It's kind of a thin one so click on it and go for something heavyweight. There you go. Okay. I don't like it, but you know, whatever. Let's go ahead and hit undo a couple of times like the way it was, but nonetheless, it's there for you to make your changes and also set the outline to be in dash instead of a solid line. Let's see, there's a dash. And let's click off. You also have the shape effects like we did for our line here. Click on it and you can give it a glow or maybe how about a reflection? How about that? There we go. So it looks like the moon reflecting over water. Oh, that's fun. And then if you want more options, what you see here, again, you can click on the drop down arrow, like for effects, outline, or fill. And when you get to a point where you don't like what you see here and you want more options, glow options, there we go. Click on that and it opens up the task pane. And you can do more here or it'll have more options for you, like the size of the glow. Do you want it five point, which is about, oh gosh, well, we won't know until we go ahead and click and drag. To really emphasize that and okay so it's a really glowing glow moon and uh, it's got a little reflection off the water and the transparency in any case more options cool let's go ahead and close out of here and before I do that just keep in mind when you're working in here you've got the title here the shape the formatting of the shape you have the shape options and then text options can shapes have text oh yes they can let me go ahead and close out of it and I'll show you in just a second once we wrap this up like, for example, if I want to make more of the same shape, copy it, paste it. Can I do that? Of course you can. Let's go ahead and select that one. And you can right-click on it. And if you don't move your mouse, you get the option to copy. But if you right-click and move the mouse, then it says, do you want to move a copy of it here or just move it here? So if I do copy of it here, it kind of looks like it's blurry, but it's not vibrating. It's just a copy of it so close to the other one. So let me hit the Delete key, select it, and you can right-click to copy. Or better yet, what I like doing, is with it selected here, you know, you can see the selection circles, resizing circles around the line, is holding down the control key and hitting D for duplicate. And you can click to drag to move it out, or you can use the arrow keys on the keyboard, up or down, left or right, and then hover over the end till I can see arrows pointing in opposite directions. Click and drag to turn it around and point it up that way maybe, and then click and drag to resize that and then turn it around and click and drag. Oh, see, I'm getting part of that moon as it were in there, the circle, because you see how that reflection extends beyond it. So let me go ahead and hit undo. I gotta be careful not to get too close or it'll accidentally select it. So I really gotta get down low enough so I can, oh, see, it's not letting me do that. Let me hit undo again. Let's click off, click on it, and then click and drag it. Okay, so that's me being careful. Great. And if I'm concerned about the size and want them to be the exact same size, well, with the selected up here on the format tab in the size group, there's the height and there's the width. What about the other one? Go ahead and select it. Let's see, 1.25 and 0.92. 1.25, nope. 0.92, nope. So they're different. So you can go ahead and if you remember it, come in here and then type in 1.25, hit enter, and then what was it? 0.92, hit enter, okay, and then click off. Okay, and then I want to show you how you can add text to it, which is really simplistic. All you have to do is go ahead and select your shape and just start typing. This is a circle. That's it. When you're done, go ahead and click off. You can also right-click on it and go to Edit Text. Well, it doesn't have any text in it, I know, but when you click on Edit, the cursor is flashing within it, and you can type in whatever you want. And of course, you can format the text therein if you want to click and drag or double click really fast to select the word. And you got your mini formatting toolbar, make it bold, italics, underline, change the color, and things like that. Then when you're done, click off and that's a square. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.